Welcome back to the Morning Drive on this Tuesday morning here on AM 1240 KFMO. Time for our monthly chat with Serenity Hospice Care. Joining us in studio this morning, world traveler Shelly Odell. Good morning, Shelly. Good morning. How was your vacation? It was amazing. Yeah, where'd you go? Uh, Cancun, Mexico. Cancun, Mexico. Was, was it your utterly, first time there? Yes. And it's my first time flying in direct internationally. So, yeah. but it was, it was, yeah, it was a fantastic. I'd recommend it to anybody and I want to do it again. Okay. Like so I'm going week? on a cruise next week. <laughs> are you really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Man, you <laughs> yeah. are a vacation taker. Yeah. But when the kids are out of the house, you can do stuff like that. Well, yeah. I have one 16 year old who's still at home and he's going with us, but. Oh, okay. I'm about to yeah. say he can take care of himself. Yeah, maybe. pretty much. Yeah. We're, we're really in a good place right now. Yeah. Sounds like it. Sounds like it. <laughs> And you have a great guest with you this morning. I do. Uh, joining us this morning is uh, Jackie Maynard. Jackie, good morning. Thanks so much for being on the show this morning. Good morning. Um, shoot a little bit closer to the microphone, if you don't mind. You don't have to like lean in and, and swallow it or anything, because I don't know, maybe the person that, sat, that? sat there last time, perfect. I was worried maybe the person that sat there last time had really bad coffee breath. I didn't want you to <laughs> smell that. So. But no, it's great. I'm, I'm glad you're here this morning. And Jackie, you are kind of the, uh, I guess, star of uh, the uh, new campaign that is out there right now, kind of talking about relationships that you've had with patients through Serenity Hospice Care, and in particular, a patient we're going to talk about this morning named Elmer. But first, um, I just wanted to get a little bit about your background, uh, uh, your your nursing career, and uh, what brought you to Serenity Hospice. It was a God thing. Mm -hmm. I was in retail before I got into nursing. Mm Mm-hmm. And after I went through all the letters working in a nursing home, I knew that I wanted to do hospice work. And it was just one of those things that I was nudged until I found them, or they, they found me. Um, but it's And I've heard that from several people that work at Serenity Hospice Care. It's, it's always a spiritual thing that they've ultimately found their way into this profession. And from somebody on the outside looking in, I'm thinking, man, how depressing is that? You're dealing with people that are at the end of their life. But I think there's something very re- rewarding about that. And that's something I hear from uh, people that deal with hospice uh, day after day. It is totally rewarding. And it's not, it's joyful. Mm-hmm. It can be joyful at the end because it's such a privilege to be able to be with a family, to be with a patient at the end of life and be able to support them through all the transitions. And then the family as well to give them support and, and answer the questions and give them what they need. Now, people that have uh, been driving up and down Highway 67, they've seen the billboards uh, featuring uh, patient Elmer Elmer Roth. You've heard the uh, ads here on the radio on our stations. Tell us a little bit about Elmer and why he was so special to you. Oh, I met Elmer and his wife, Clara. Oh, it's over seven years ago. Mm -hmm. Our company has several programs, and one of them is our palliative program where we go in and just start monitoring and and helping out in little ways with families and uh, patients that aren't necessarily hospice-appropriate or really sick. Mm -hmm. And that's how I met them was going in on palliative visits and just fell in love. uh, This couple had been together since they were three years old. Three years old? Three years old. They knew each other when they were growing up. So they lived on Kaskaskia Island, Illinois, which is actually in Missouri. It's just one of those weird things. Yeah. But they, they grew up in the same neighborhood, went to school together. He went in the Army. He came back and finally asked her to, and they were in their mid to late 20s when they got married. Hmm. And they were married over 65 years wow. when Clara passed. Wow. So, you know, she was 90, I want to say 91 when she passed. So they'd been together, you know, they'd been Almost together Almost 90 forever, years. Forever. Yeah. Wow. That is, that's an amazing story to uh, have a, a love that's lasted that long. And I'm sure that was kind of one of the things that, that drew you to them because these people obviously love each other so much. There's a lot of love there, isn't oh, there? Oh, it's an immense amount of love. Immense. And you could just see they were like two peas in a pod. They, they worked together to function. Mm-hmm. She could move, but she had Alzheimer's, so she had the memory deficit. He was totally on spot at the beginning, but had heart issues and couldn't stand for long periods and couldn't get around. 
So he would keep directing her as to what to do so that they could survive. Wow. Uh, so, I mean, they were a team. They were a team. They were a team. And, and I think that's one of the advantages of hospice when you have a, a couple that works together as a team. I saw my grandparents do the same thing as well with my grandpa wasn't physically as able. She was able to kind of pick up the slack. And I assume that whenever hospice comes in, you try to work with the patient to, to try to pick up the slack when an unfortunate situation like that happens. Oh, sure. We work with what we've got. Mm -hmm. the, this particular family only have one son uh, who had never married. You know, and it's like, it was really tough on him, yeah. especially in the beginning. So we had to, to do a lot of education with him and not necessarily hand-holding, but almost getting behind him and pushing. Mm -hmm. That mom and dad, you know, they're not as self-sufficient as they used to be. And to, get it, to really get him on board to do the things, you know, over the years. I mean, we're talking a seven-year period. So this is, you know, it's, it's not like we did something overnight. You know, we worked through the palliative program, and then Clara got sick first and went on hospice and all the way through. But it's, you know, it's, it's a support system. You have to be there to help support and bring in the social worker or bring in volunteers. Sometimes you just need a little extra socialization because they can't leave the house. Mm -hmm. So that makes a difference. I really think the image of Elmer, and I don't know if it was you that's holding the razor mm -hmm. or if it's somebody yep. that was you, that's, that's your hand. Uh, I think that's a powerful image, and I think that really sums up not only the medical aspect of things, but everything else that, that you do with Serenity? Oh, it's a total, a total care. You have a, a nurse, either an LPN or an RN, that does total care for your family member. So if, if they need a shave, that's what they get. You know, if they need a shower or just an assist, someone to get them in the tub and hand them stuff, it's whatever. And you don't think about the little things, like just cutting your toenails, you yeah. know. As you get older, debilitated, you can see your toes, but you can't do anything about them. Yeah. So it's just, you know, just the little things that we can come in. And sometimes that's all we do are just the little things to begin with. Um, one of the stories that comes out in, in, in the ads is about his flagpole. You mentioned his military service. Um, yeah. Talk about that and how important that was to Elmer. Well, and see, that's just it. He was so humble about having been in the military. But you could tell, he would say, you'd get to talking, and he would bring up the stories of when he was in the Philippines or on the Canadian border, and he would talk about all the things he'd done. And he was military intelligence. This was not somebody that was back behind the lines, sitting in a tent or whatever. This man and two others or three others, or sometimes by himself, would be out ahead of everyone trying to figure out where they needed to go or what they needed to do. And he was so humble because he'd say, well, I'm not a hero, I just, had to, I just did what I had to do. And it's like, no, you don't understand. Mm -hmm. And he'd say, well, I, I'm, not the, I'm not the smartest one. I, I don't, you know, I, and he would just kind of put himself down and it's like, no, you don't understand how important everything you did was to all of us now. Mm -hmm. It's just, he was just so amazing. He was just so humble. And that's, that's a common trait of that generation, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. That is very much so. And we have several, a lot of our patients, um, different ones that I visited, mm -hmm. will have, we have one patient that had an entire room with his commendations and pictures and all the stuff he did. But if you ask him to talk about it, oh, I'm not a hero. I, I just did what I had to do. Right. And it's, it's just, it's so amazing. It really goes to show the character that, that those and people have. That's mm -hmm. it. It's the character. It's, it's, and I, I hate to say it, but I miss that sometimes in our younger generations. Yeah. I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. Um, talk about the relationship, and, and you've talked a little bit about it, that you develop with patients when they come on hospice care. You mentioned with, with Elmer's situation coming in originally with the palliative care, mm -hmm. you kind of get to know him a little bit better. Talk about how that relationship grows and kind of how the trust grows too. Oh, it's definitely. And that's one of the things I tell our patients when I first come in. 
I give them a wholehearted thanks because it takes a lot of trust to open the door to a complete stranger and say, oh yeah, come on into our lives. I'll let you take over. You just take over and tell us what we need to do. And it's okay. I trust you. That, it's just so astounding to me. And I am so thankful that people allow us to do that. And sometimes, even with Elmer's family and he and Clara, we became fast friends early on. It mm -hmm. didn't take long. It was just one of those things that we clicked. But we have other patients where we may only have them on services for a week. But the instant you walk in, you just know. You know you're in the right place, and you're able to give them what they need. And it it's may be a fast relationship, but it can be just as deep as the ones where we have them for months or even years. It's it's not common for us to have patients in our service system for that long, mm -hmm. but it was just because he started so early in the system and that it's, it's really hard sometimes. We, and that's the one thing that we hear from families. The biggest thing we hear, I wished we'd called sooner. Mm -hmm. Oh, I wished we had hospice sooner. And that's the one thing we hear the most yeah. that I wish we could change. Mm -hmm. Because developing those relationships, you're able to understand family dynamics. You're able to understand the history of the patient to know how to address them or what to offer, you know, what they need and that sort of thing. So it's just, you know, wish we'd called sooner. Jackie Maynard is our guest. She's a registered nurse with Serenity Hospice Care. Joining us for our Serenity Hospice Care report on this Tuesday on KFMO. Shelly Odell's here, too. We're going to ask her a little bit about the uh, new website uh, coming up. Uh, but I got, I got one more question for you, Jackie. How difficult is it when you come into the situation and you have a spouse that took care of all of these certain needs? Like you mentioned earlier, cutting the toenails, shaving, doing things like that. Sometimes that's hard to let go, isn't it? Oh, it's very difficult because here again, some of our spouses have been together 30, 50, 60 years. Mm -hmm. And that, that's all they know. This And this is how they show their love is by being able to feed them or fix their, or take them to the toilet, whatever it is. And you just, it takes time and that you have to be gentle and just say, let me help you. Let me help you. And sometimes it's just kind of eking in. You just do one little thing at a time, and then they realize that you're actually there, and you're not there to take over, really. Mm -hmm. uh, you're there just to help, and it, it, but it does take time. It does take time, especially with the, the frail elderly taking care of the frail elderly. Sometimes they need as much help as the patient does. Absolutely. You enjoy your job, don't you? I am blessed. Mm -hmm. I am blessed. I get to go get up every morning. I don't go to work. I get to do something I love to do, and they pay me for it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how much better does it get? You know, it just, it just doesn't get any better than that. Uh, and it, I get to touch, and as much as I get to touch lives, so many people touch my life. And I get to learn from them. And I get, in as much as I get to love them, I get their love too. And it's, it's a give and take, but it's just, I'm blessed. I am blessed. You know, Jason, I've had the opportunity to um, sit with Jackie and Elmer together mm -hmm. and watch them. And it truly is a beautiful sight to see. And I think um, being able to, having that opportunity to actually sit with them and watch them interact and watch her service to him and his appreciation and gratitude for her, um, along with the son, you know, Larry and the family. Um, I think that's another thing that caused really, um, inspired me as a director of marketing to be able to show what this relationship is really like. And I think there's such a negative connotation and perception about hospice that it was so important to me 
and I think as a, as a company to be able to show the world what real hospice is like. And um, there was no more beautiful story to be able to um, expose that relationship to the world than this one. And um, it was quite the inspiring sight. I just wish everyone had the opportunity to sit and watch that um, before they make decisions about hospice or n- and decisions not to use hospice. Uh, let's talk uh, real quickly about the website, serenityhc.org. Yeah. A little bit of a facelift there. You've incorporated yes. a lot of those images of uh, Jackie and Elmer, and yep. uh, things look really sharp right now. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, it was uh, quite the undertaking, uh, definitely a labor of love. But um, it's been, I mean, we've already had great feedback on it. Um, actually, as a matter of fact, the company who helped design it is submitting it for an award um, and has spotlighted the, the website on their own website, um, sharing it with people. So it, and we just posted that on our Facebook page. So we invite everybody to check that out. But definitely uh, serenityhc.org. Um, there's lots of new things. I mean, we have a consultation um, request basically at the bottom of every page where if people just simply have questions about hospice, if they have questions about um, maybe some um, a diagnosis that they just received and they, they just want to ask about it, they can actually go to that, type in their name, their information, and then within 24 hours, Um, or one business day, we will call them back and set up an appointment to meet with them face to face. Um, If they don't want to do that, then of course they can always call us and ask questions um, just the same. But there's a lot of new different things. You can see a lot of videos um, that explains our interdisciplinary team, um, which is um, our nurses, our social workers, um, our volunteers, and our spiritual care providers. So that's a lot of new things to the website. Um, We have a frequently asked questions page where if you don't really have a lot of time to search the website, Website, go to that page and it's basically our frequently asked questions and we have answers to that. Um, I think it speaks directly to those really top of mind questions that people have right off the bat about hospice. Um, we also have um, a health care um, a healthcare provider tab where those in the healthcare can actually make referrals to hospice online um, to us now. And then also um, they can make them to not only hospice to our comfort care program, which is our palliative program, and that's free to the community. Um, um, and then um, they can also facilities um, and healthcare providers can request trainings online as well. So those will actually go directly to me and we can set those up for them. And you can check it out online, serenityhc.org to use all of those tools that are available through the website. Shelly, anything else we need to cover this morning? I don't think so. I think we covered it all really well. Well, I, and uh, Jackie, just listening to the the passion in your voice and seeing some of the images on the website, too, I think just just paints a beautiful story of what you do, what Serenity Hospice Care does. And uh, I really appreciate it. And uh, there's a couple times you gave me chills this morning, which doesn't happen very often. Well, thank you very, very much. And thank you for the opportunity just to let people know what we do. And you can find out more information online, serenityhc.org. And that's our Serenity Hospice Care Report on this Tuesday here on AM 1240 KFML.